It is the day after Christmas, everyone. I hope you had a holly jolly Merry Christmas. And if you celebrate other holidays, happy holidays. I hope they were joyous, festive, and wonderful for you. If you're one of the evil cocksucker who's oppressing all of the have-nots, all of us powerless folks, I hope that you had the most rotten holiday ever. See, we exist in a society that should be steered like a ship in the sense that the people in charge want us to thrive. Because if they were truly just greedy bastards, they would want everyone to be as happy as they can possibly be so that they can produce the best work, so that we can have the most profitable society imaginable. When you constantly beat people down and beat people down and keep beating them down and making them just feel so utterly small and so utterly hopeless, that's when the people running the cogs in this grand machine we call life just don't give a fuck. And it's not their fault. It's not that people these days are forgetting you. It's like Kevin McAllister once said, they haven't forgotten you, they've just forgotten to remember you. And that's because we all have such epic struggles going on. We're all trying to slay our dragons, slay the beasts, and find a way to have some joy, have some comfort. But like I said, we exist in a society that oppresses us all. And you can see that on the news when they're talking about aliens are real or aliens aren't real. And all of this fucking confusing bullshit mumbo jumbo. Hey, everyone. Either aliens are real, or the government is just outright fucking with us, because there are all of these attempts to block disclosure attempts, and they're hiding behind national security the way that Israel hides behind Judaism. And I'm not trying to say that Jews are bad people. I'm saying the people in charge of Israel are bad people who are hiding behind a faith that they don't even practice. There are wonderful people in Israel who just want peace, and there are wonderful people in Palestine who just want peace, and that's what matters. At the end of the day, all of us, deep inside, just want to party. We don't want any of this war shit, we don't want any of this violent shit, but when you keep poking and prodding people, when you make life so miserable, eventually they start looking for a target because they're like, there's got to be somebody to target, there's got to be somebody to target. That way that they can think that they're fighting off the oppression that they're facing, but we're not being oppressed by the people around us, we're being oppressed by the people above us. And I do not mean the angels of love and the creator of the universe who is filled with love. Because if we read any actual religious texts, we will come to understand that they're all basically talking about the same motherfucking things, and that's wonderful. And it doesn't mean that you can't be DC or you can't be Marvel. What it actually means is that you can celebrate that you're DC while appreciating that the Marvel side loves the same kind of shit. They have their own heroes, all right? But their heroes and your heroes are the same heroes. You've just labeled them differently. You've created different ways of understanding them and different ways of appreciating them. And that allows us all to be creative, imaginative individuals, which is how it should be. We should be able to come down and realize, wow, there really is a God of love and a God of fear. And the God of fear is a false God. Fuck that God. And do you understand how we live in an oppressive society? Because even though... We are a Christian-dominated society. Have you ever once heard this discussion with children? It's a wonderful way to bring Christ into the holiday season, and I'm not trying to shove that rhetoric down your throat. I'm trying to prove to you that even when they have these rhetorics, they don't use them in a way that can inspire hope, joy, and love, and creative, imaginative endeavors within children. Just check this shit out. Don't you think it's possible that one day Jesus was chilling, and God came in the room, and God was like, Yo, Jesus... What do you want for your birthday this year? And Jesus was like, you know what? I feel so blessed and I've been so blessed. And really, since everything about my whole being is just trying to take care of the whole of humanity and trying to save them, what I'd really want for my birthday, Dad, is for you 
to enable everyone to feel such harmonious joy, such blessings, and just such childlike wonder, like I am filled with every day because of you. And that's why I believe that God is Santa Claus. Unlike all of these people who say that God is Santa Claus for adults, hey, guess what? Yeah, maybe God is an imaginary friend, but have you ever taken a second <laughs> to figure out what imagination might be? Everything that is awesome in our lives is made from a magic fucking nation. They had to imagine the iPhone. They had to imagine our game systems. They had to imagine the games we play. You see where I'm going with this? And it's like, it's not even just artsy fartsy shit that has to be imagined. They had to imagine cures for diseases. Although the government's probably hiding a lot of them. Am I right? Yes, I am. Anyway. <laughs> The goal here is that we don't understand imagination because imagination is responsible for all of creation. Because you had to imagine a society, you had to imagine a currency system, and then you had to get a bunch of people to believe in it for that shit to work. The problem is that the basis of our society have been around since ancient fucking Egypt. Yeah, that long ago. And the story of ancient Egypt was Pharaoh being pissed off with the Jewish people because they had their own faith, they had their own God that they believed in, and if you read the Old Testament, their God utterly fucked up Pharaoh and his gods. And that's why Pharaoh is afraid of people who have faith in a God of love. You know, if a person's just sitting here going, I'm not harming you, I just believe what I believe, I'm not trying to force it on you. This just makes me and my family happy, and this makes other people in my neighborhood happy, and we even have those in our neighborhood who practice the Pharaoh shit. But Pharaoh was like, no, fuck that. You got to do exactly what I tell you to do. You got to believe exactly what I tell you to believe, because it's all about controlling people's thoughts, controlling people's feelings, and not allowing you to be liberated from suffering and misery. The way the world truly works is that it's not that the good forces are punishing people who are just sitting and brooding. It's unfortunately, it works a little something like this. The good forces open windows for us. And if we sit there just looking at that open window, nothing's going to happen. We have to go through the window. But there are these dark, evil forces that are conspiring to make us say, fuck that, I don't want to go through the fucking window. I don't want to deal with the fucking window. And we can't listen to those forces. We have to listen to the little navvy from fucking Zelda's going, Hey, listen, there's a window. You go through the window, shit's going to get better. And that's because those are acts of faith. And the more acts of faith that you make, especially when you put those acts of faith in the power of love and positive thinking, will you turn off that loud fucking machine asshole. In any case, when you make those choices based on faith, based on love, you are empowering the good side of the force. It is simply that because we are all stuck in such suffering and misery that we're empowering the dark negative side. And that makes it very difficult for our angels and our aliens, whatever you want to think of them at, to help us out, to assist us. Thank you for shutting the fuck up a little bit out there. I appreciate that. And they're going to come back again. <laughs> in any case... It really is the fact that we are not being punished, but the way things work is that you have to have faith. You have to go into an endeavor. It's like a, a parent who really wants to get a PS5 for their kid, but they don't think they're going to be able to find one or afford one. It's like you have to look for the way. It's not that you have to do it all on your own. You just have to start making the steps. And then windows will be open for you, and you got to step through that window, and then you got to step through this window, and then eventually you've met your goal. Eventually, you, you collect enough money, maybe you borrow from friends, maybe you work extra hours. Then you get to the store, and they just got a new shipment of PS5s in, and you're able to score that perfect, wonderful gift for your kid. And then you get to see them light up and be so happy. And that's really a magical thing, but I also like to point out that everything is kind of like 69ing, okay? It's great to give. It's great to receive. But when you're only into giving, then you've become sort of a martyr. And when you're only into receiving, you've become sort of selfish. So you have to realize that you want to give and you want to receive. And that's what truly makes things wonderful. 
And see, that's why I'm filled with such joy now, because I truly believe in a loving, creative force that's protected me, that's guided me, that's nurtured me, that's sent me signs. I mean, it really is like that old Native American saying that we have a wolf of fear within us and a wolf of love. And whichever one you feed the most is going to win. And we have to realize that if a lot of those religious texts are real, and they are, because they're all pointing to the same thing, and a lot of people wrote the same thing before they ever met each other. You know, you have this text over in this part of the world, this text over in this part of the world, and those fuckers never met, but they were writing about the same shit. That's the power of imagination. It's wonderful. And so that's why we got to realize a lot of these stories tell us that the true power of God is within us all. And that's really what I believe that a fair, loving, unconditionally loving God would do, that he would bestow upon us those kind of manifestation powers, those kind of powers of wishes that he would want us to feel built up. And he would want us to have the same equal power that he has. But the problem is when you have a lot of these asshole jokers going around manipulating us and trying to make us suffer, well, then we're not able to use our wizarding powers as effectively as we should be. Everything is magical. Everything is wonderful if you allow it to be. Because I have truly seen that when you put faith in positive thinking, and I don't mean you're just thinking positive thoughts all day. I mean, you're simply not sitting there thinking that the worst is going to happen. You're sitting there going, I don't know how, but I have hope and I have faith that things are going to work out. So I can't tell you exactly how we're going to beat these oppressive powers that be. But I will tell you this, since we're all the children of the creating force, then that means that our father's kind of like Batman, and Batman's really fucking pissed. And he told me so, because I know that I've been giving the finger to fear for a long time. I made a video a few months back talking about how fear attacks, anxiety attacks, prove that evil is real. Because if you have anxiety because you went through a specific condition, then there should only be specific triggers. But when you actually start to try to fight your anxiety, you realize that bitch is organic, it's alive, it fights you back. That's not normal. But all of these psychiatrists, all of the society around you tries to tell you that you're crazy, that you're schizophrenic if you hear things, if you know things, if you believe that there are actually aliens out there. Well, we have enough proof that there's shit flying around in our sky that's thousands of years more advanced than us. Where the fuck did it come from? And as a matter of fact, if you could go back to Egypt again, how the fuck did those fucking pyramids get built? I believe that an evil, oppressive force came down. Maybe they created humanity. Maybe they're just farming humanity. But they empowered people who were evil like them. They gave them power to have power over us. And the thing is, the creating force is erythral. It's all around us. It's like Wi-Fi. So it doesn't have as much of a physical presence unless we back up that physical presence with our faith and our hope and our wishes, our dreams, and that we sit there and try to manifest them simply by not giving up on them and simply by trying when we have opportunities to do something about those things. Wow, I've been really on a roll today. Like This is great. And this is what it means to be connected to that quantum field, that imagination field, you start channeling, you start becoming a vessel through which that fucking light can flow. And that is epic. And that's why I've got to point out to you evil people, yeah, maybe you shouldn't be scared of me. But I've been making a lot of wishes and a lot of manifestation type of concentrated thinking to bring down evil. And I've been fucking with fear a lot lately, and I've been understanding that it's trying to chase me down, but then I turned around and I was like, hey, bitch, what the fuck you want? And it was like, oh my god. You're actually standing up to me? Like, I don't know. I'm going to try to keep oppressing you, but the more you stand up to me, the less power I have. And it's like, yes, you do. You have fuck all power because you ain't going to do shit. Because all this evil that's around us, all this suffering, all this misery, it's an illusion. It isn't real unless you use your manifestation, your wishes, your prayers to make it real. And when you sit there just focusing on those awful things, you are making it real for yourself. But when you sit there and you focus on wonderful things, a good movie, a good song, a good story, doesn't matter what the fuck it is, just something that makes you feel good. And as long as that thing that makes you feel good isn't oppressing someone or hurting them, go forth and enjoy. You want to sit there jerking off all day? Wonderful. You want to watch porn all day? Wonderful. You want to do 
the good drugs. Wonderful. And, and that's mushrooms and that's marijuana, the psychedelics. But I, I just warn you that right now, since we're dealing with a cosmic, supernatural, paranormal storm of evil, that when you start entering those psychedelic realms, it can get heavy, man. But that's okay. Because there is something watching out over you. There is something protecting you. There is something guiding you. And the more that we focus on faith over fear, love over fear, the more that side is empowered and the better things are going to be. We are getting proof right now that we are being lied to. Come on, folks. Even if you don't believe that aliens are real, you have to look at it and go, then why the fuck is the news and the government pulling all this shit? Because it's what Michael Jackson tried to tell us so long ago. They don't care about us. They never have. That's why all of human history has been suffering and only the strong have survived. That's bullshit. It is not a sin to be weak. It's not a sin to look out at the world and feel so drained that you don't feel like you can even provide for yourself. There should be services to help people. Not just hospitals that you throw people in and you indoctrinate them into your bullshit. And not just jails that you throw them into when they make one simple mistake. A normal, powerless, have-not kind of person makes a mistake. They get thrown in jail. Their entire life is destroyed and ruined. It takes so much courage, so much will and determination to build yourself back up, to find hope, to find faith, and to get back to a normal sense of life. Especially since in those prisons they are practicing bullshit MK Ultra style mind control, brainwashing techniques that are meant to mentally fucking destroy you. I know I was there, okay? I've been through this shit, so I know what I'm talking about. Yes, this little geeky, out there kind of person went to jail. Why? Because I had a mental breakdown on Christmas Eve. That's all I did. I yelled and screamed in a store because I was homeless at the time and my dad was dying of cancer and my entire life was falling apart around you. And they're like, hey, guess what? We're going to make your life even more shitty. Thank you. That's the exact kind of help I needed. Not the hero from Batman Begins that puts a coat on a small child or says, hey, hey, I get it. Times are rough. And what you need is a chance to be helped, is, is a chance. But instead, you can be a Wall Street banker. You can be all of those banking companies who, during the recession, literally stole from all their clients, just like we saw in South Park. Here's your money, and it's gone. They weren't properly investing those monies. They used every single loophole that they could just so that they could steal for themselves, but not just because they were greedy, but because they wanted to watch the normal people suffer. If there was anything else, then the wonderful Obama wouldn't just have bailed out the banks, he would have helped all of those people who were made homeless and had their lives destroyed by those bastards in the banking industry. And I got to tell you something, money, currency, that's only a debt-based system. How do you have money when it's like essentially how it starts is you have this one source of money, like this one bank or this one government source, and then it gives it out to people who have good ideas, who start businesses, and then they give their money to their employees, and then their employees spend money on other goods and services, and it goes around in a circle. Essentially, you're never going to have more money than you started with unless you're actually selling things to other countries, but then it's like, what is their currency? Even if you're basing it around gold, it's like, who decides what gold is worth? The only actual useful application for gold is that you can use that to make shit. But then you're basically back to a bartering and trading system and you're just using money as an IOU placeholder. It's not real. It's just as imaginary as people like to say God is. But hey, people believe it's real, so it seems real to them. But I got to tell you, other than being able to get the shit that you need with it, it doesn't do a damn thing for you the way that sitting and having faith can't. It's weird. Because I didn't grow up as a Christian or spiritual type of person. I discovered this shit when my life fell apart. And it was like there was something tapping me on the shoulder going, hey, it's going to be all right. And I'm like, fuck you, it's not going to be all right. And they're like, hey, it will be all right. And no matter how many times you tell me to fuck off, we're not. We're going to be here for you. You're not going to feel alone so long as you can realize you aren't alone. So long as you can realize that there is this wonderful force and there are wonderful spirits all around you, watching over you, protecting you, and making you feel good. You don't have to worry about sin. You're not a sinner. You're a normal person who's made mistakes. The only sin is to go out and to use power that can save 
to oppress people. The only sinners are those in charge of society. The rest of us are just folks who have made mistakes. And no matter how many mistakes you've made, that force is always going to take care of you. They're always going to look after you. But you have to love them back, not because they want to be loved back, because you have to have that wonder twin powers activate kind of shit. Because when you're sitting there using all of your godlike powers to empower brooding and suffering and misery, there's only so much they can do for you. And they weep knowing that they can't do more for you. And it's not because you have to go accept Christ into your heart. It's that you just have to accept faith and hope into your heart and love. It's as simple as that. And that's what they try to steal from us when we go to religious organizations. They don't try to teach us, hey, you don't have to take any of the stories literally. All you have to do is realize that it's faith, love, and hope over fear. That's it. It's that simple. And as long as you believe those things, good things will happen for you. Because it doesn't matter if you prefer Batman or if you prefer Spider-Man. That shit doesn't matter because they all represent a hero. And we all believe that there's a hero out there that's going to save us, that's going to make things better. And that's what matters. You look around the world. People are not stupid. People are not evil because if they were evil, the world would look at Grand Theft Auto. Everybody does what they're told. Everybody believes what they're told. That's wonderful. Those are wonderful qualities. Those are trusting qualities. That's just like being a child and believing in the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus. And those things are as real as you want them to be. So that's why you have to make what's real, what matters to you, what's important to you, what brings joy and betterment into your life. And you have to start realizing that the things that make your life shitty are just simple delusions. They are illusions. They are there to be an obstacle, to be a challenge that you certainly can overcome. It isn't easy. Having faith and having hope is very difficult, especially during this part of history. But it can be done. And then their will can be done. And then all those evil people out there who've made us all suffer, they're going to regret it. It's like having Batman for your dad and Merry Little Batman. You might think that you're down and out, but then all of a sudden Batman shows up and you get to team up together and whoop they fucking ass. And that's exactly what's going down right now. You got to have faith. You got to have hope. You got to realize, hey, I don't care what that person thinks. I want them to be happy because I want to be happy because I receive nothing from taking their happiness from them. The evil powers that be want us to be like them. And there's nothing wrong with making fucked up jokes, everyone, because a joke is a joke. If you look at something and you just want to think of something in an absurd, imaginative way because it makes you laugh, that's fine. Because all you have to do is realize, do I wish evil upon this person? If the answer is no, then you're fine. Make as many jokes as you want because a joke doesn't hurt anyone. It's that wish within your heart to make the evil part of the joke true. If you're just making evil dark jokes, then you're laughing at darkness. You're laughing at evil. You're going, I don't take this seriously. I find it so fucking amusing because it's so utterly stupid to me. Thank you all so much for listening. I cannot wait for the day when these videos actually reach the masses and that we're able to do some good because we're able to talk about things in a different way. I haven't seen anybody talk about shit the way that I talk about it. Because I want to include everyone. I want to break this stuff down to the simplest childlike ideal so that we can all understand it, we can all appreciate it, and then we can go off and create our own shit. And then we can share that back and forth with one another. We can collaborate because that's what everything's about. It's not about one person becoming the ultimate artist. It's about one person becoming an artist and going, hey, I like your shit. Let's put this together because to make my art, I need your art. And to make your art, you need my art. We all need everyone. But most of all, we need the people who are going to work along with us. And the people who aren't going to work along with us aren't our enemies. They're just out there to work with other people. They haven't forgotten you. They might have forgotten to remember you. But that's the problem we're dealing with right now. Because we live in such an oppressive, bullshit society that's ran by such sadistic, evil bastards. And you know that that's true. There's no re Like, you don't have to give handouts to everyone. But seriously, when we have more empty fucking houses than we have homeless people, you realize something's fucked up. Nobody has to be homeless. But they decide, oh, this thing costs this much and people have to pay it. Fuck that. 
And some people might go, oh, well, maybe they just don't want to give free houses away to people because other people who've paid for their houses will bitch and it'll create a commotion. Last time I checked, these people weren't above beating the shit out of people and smoke grenading everyone to get people to shut the fuck up, even when they were talking about worthwhile subjects. So I'm pretty sure that if you did the right thing by giving homes to the homeless and by making sure that we all had decent places to live, that if anybody was bitching about that, why not use those wonderful riot police just to get them to shut the fuck up? You're going to use it for evil means, but you're not going to use it for the right means? Of course you're not, because you're oppressing us all. And it is that fucking simple. You want us to all be afraid. You want us to all be miserable. And that somehow empowers you because you've made some weird, evil, magic deal, what the fuck ever. But that ain't what matters. What matters is love. And that our dad is like Superman, it's like Batman, it's like Spider-Man, it's like Captain America, it's like Iron Man. It's whatever hero that we cherish the most. And that hero is going to come and kick all y'all villains' asses. And all we have to do is sit, keep hope and faith alive until that happens. Because there are shit going down around us. Yes, evil evidently has the power to control a great many of people. And perhaps they could use that to cause some damage. But guess what? Love is also there working, ensuring that basically everyone doesn't snap at the same time. Love is more powerful than fear and hate. It really, really is. Otherwise, the world would look like a wacky version of Grand Theft Auto Online. Thank you so much for listening. I love all of you, my Ohana out there. And remember, as long as you're just a human who's making mistakes and you You've not done anything to actually hurt someone who hasn't hurt you. It's different if you're dealing with somebody who's bullied you and you're just standing up and fighting back for yourself. That's not evil. Evil is when you go out and you're like, hey, I want to make everybody's life as miserable as possible. As long as you're not one of those kind of motherfuckers, you're a good person. As long as you're sitting there waiting for things to get better and you just you can't have any energy to do it on your own, you're not a bad person. You don't deserve suffering or misery. Nobody does except for these people who have oppressed us all. Only that evil, oppressive force deserves to have its ass kicked into oblivion. The rest of us are all Ohana, and that means nobody gets left behind or forgotten. People make mistakes. It's okay. I love you all. Thank you so much.